Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we would like to demonstrate the proper basic procedures for installing the Lovejoy DI drop-in spacer style disc coupling. Lovejoy disc style couplings are ideal for connecting electric motors to fans, blowers, compressors, pumps, and other devices. The DI style coupling utilizes a dual disc pack and spacer design that can accommodate axial, angular, and parallel misalignment. This coupling is ideal for applications where there is a need to transmit torque between two bearing supported shafts with a known shaft separation. The DI coupling meets AGMA Class 9 balance requirements as manufactured, and additional balance capabilities are available upon request. A drop in spacer assembly consists of a spacer, two disc packs, and guard rings that are fully assembled at the factory. This assembly is piloted to the hubs and conforms to the API 610 requirements for anti-flail. For this installation, please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy installation guide for your particular coupling. The installation guide can be found online at Lovejoy's website utilizing the resource tab. Then follow the link to installation instructions. Once you locate the installation guide, click on the PDF icon to download the guide. This installation guide contains important details such as allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings to use when tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain additional performance and dimensional information, important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A lockout tagout kit, safety glasses, alignment equipment, an oven, calibrated torque wrench, a socket to fit the hub mounting bolts, an open end wrench, vernier calipers, a micrometer, a gap micrometer to measure between the shaft ends, heat resistant gloves, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, and rubberized gloves. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout-tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The following components are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy DI style disc coupling. You should have two DI style hubs, a DI drop in spacer assembly, and hub mounting bolts to connect the hubs to the spacer assembly. Prior to installing this coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping, and check the bore size for accuracy. By default, Lovejoy supplies disc coupling hubs with an interference fit, and you may notice the hubs are bored slightly smaller than the equipment shaft diameters. DI spacer style disc couplings are commonly used in applications where the ease of equipment maintenance is a concern, and moving the equipment for service or installation could be an inconvenience or even impractical. Even though the equipment was not moved, it is always a good idea prior to installing the coupling to check shaft alignment using the preferred method of laser alignment. For this installation video, we will assume the equipment is already in place and the shafts are aligned. Except in applications where a Lovejoy SLD or shaft locking device is used, both shafts and hubs should have keyways. To accommodate dynamic balance and allow for maximum torque transmission, the length of the key should always match the length through bore of the hub. Unless otherwise specified, Lovejoy manufactures disc coupling hubs with an interference or shrink fit, and the hubs will need to be heated prior to placing them on the shafts. In this video, we will demonstrate the coupling installation using hubs with interference fit bores. Detailed procedures for heating these hubs can be found in the installation guide for DI spacer style disc couplings and should be used as a reference when preparing the hubs for installation. For this installation, 
we will be using the oven heat method to thoroughly and evenly heat the hubs to between 500 and 550 degrees Fahrenheit. We do not want to heat the hubs to any more than 600 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent the steel in the hubs from going through an annealing process. Heating the hubs to an excessive temperature could soften and damage the hubs. While we wait for the oven to preheat or come up to temperature, we can use our cloth and cleaning solvent to clean the surface of the hubs and remove any protective coatings used to protect the coupling during shipping. When the oven has reached the desired temperature, we will place the hubs on a rack, raised off the bottom of the oven, to ensure more uniform heating of the hubs. We will need to allow enough time to ensure that the hubs are thoroughly heated to the desired temperature. The required time will be dependent on the type of oven and the size of hubs being heated. While the hubs are being heated to the recommended temperature, we will finish preparations for installing the coupling. Even though the power to this equipment was disconnected, it is always a good idea to double check that the power is off prior to physically performing this installation. It is important to inspect the shaft to clean off any nicks or burrs from the keyway or the shaft itself. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. A strip of emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and keyway are clean and free of dirt. This would be a good time to measure the shaft and ensure the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Place the keys in the shaft keyways, lining up the end of each key with the end of the shaft. The key should be completely seated and fit snugly in the keyway with no side-to-side -side movement. When the hub is installed, there should be a slight clearance over the top of the key to prevent binding and to prevent buildup of stress that can cause the hub to fail as it cools. When the hubs reach the recommended temperature, the bores will be expanded enough to provide a few thousandths of clearance when sliding the hubs onto the shafts. Make sure each hub is oriented with the flanged end of the hubs facing the end of the shafts. The key should already be in place in the keyways and the hub should slide onto the shaft with little or no difficulty. Each hub will start cooling down right away and you will need to work quickly and accurately to position the hubs on the shafts. Once the hubs cool down they could be quite difficult to reposition. When the hubs are in position, the flanged end of the hub should be in line with the end of the shaft and the end of the key. At this time, let the hubs cool to the ambient or room temperature before continuing. When installing a disc coupling where one or both hubs are to be secured on the shaft using an SLD or shaft locking device, locate the SLD on the recess machined into the exterior surface of the hub. Then slide the hub on the shaft to the desired location and tighten the SLD bolts using the procedures and tightening torques specified in the SLD installation guide. The SLD is a keyless alternative to a clamping style hub and allows for axial and rotational adjustments to be made after the coupling has been installed. When the SLD bolts are loosened, the coupling hub can be removed easily without deformation or damage to the hubs, shaft, or shaft locking device. Whether the hubs are being installed using the heat method for an interference fit or installed with a keyless shaft locking device, it won't affect how we perform the rest of the installation. For the purpose of this installation, we will continue the installation with the interference fit hubs that have been installed and have cooled to ambient or room temperature. Measure the length of the DI spacer assembly and record this length. Then measure the distance between the pilot faces of the hubs and compare this with the length of the spacer assembly. These dimensions should match or be very close, perhaps within a few thousandths of an inch. Since the equipment is already in position and aligned, we won't be able to move the equipment to install the spacer assembly. If you try to install the spacer assembly as shipped, the raised edges of the hub pilots will prevent the spacer assembly from just dropping into place. The DI coupling has a useful feature, which is the ability to shorten the spacer assembly by temporarily compressing the disc packs a small amount. This will allow us to position the assembly between the hubs. The bolts needed to compress the disc packs are provided with new Lovejoy DI style couplings. Many of the larger DI spacer assemblies are shipped with special shipping bolts and sleeves, 
which are typically painted red. They serve the function of maintaining the necessary gap between the spacer and the guard ring, which, in turn, helps prevent damage from occurring to the disc packs during shipping. Even though special shipping bolts are not normally used with the coupling featured in this video, we want to show what they look like when used. Again, these bolts are generally not used on small DI couplings. Remove each of the shipping bolts and sleeves, but do not discard these bolts. When we install the spacer assembly, we will use these bolts to compress the disc packs in the spacer assembly for installation. With the bolts removed, the sleeve should be loose enough to drop out or easily be removed by hand. If the sleeves remain wedged between the flange and the guard ring, a pair of pliers can be used to remove them. The shipping bolts should then be placed right back in the same holes. If your spacer assembly did not come with shipping bolts, take a few of the hub mounting bolts and place them in the compression bolt holes as demonstrated here. Even when we need to use some of the hub mounting bolts as compression bolts, there will be enough bolts to line up and anchor the spacer assembly to the hubs. Hand tighten these compression bolts until the heads of the bolts come into contact with the spacer flange. Now let's carefully compress the disc packs. Caution should be used to tighten each of the compression bolts the same amount. Start by turning each bolt one half turn. Then measure the length of the assembly. Compare this length with the gap between the raised edges on the hubs. If the assembly is still too long, tighten each of the bolts one additional half turn. If the bolts need to be tightened more than one and one half turns, there could be a problem with the length of the spacer assembly relative to the shaft separation. While supporting the spacer assembly, carefully move the assembly between the two hubs, taking care not to impact the assembly against the ends of the hubs. Align the holes on the hubs with the mounting holes in the spacer assembly. Insert at least three hub mounting bolts through the flanges in the hubs on each end of the coupling and start threading them into the guard rings. Hand tighten the hub mounting bolts until they are snug against the hub flange. Once you have three bolts in place on each end of the coupling, the remaining holes in the hub and the guard ring should line up. Next, loosen all the compression bolts evenly one half turn at a time until the bolts are loose. Note that once you loosen the compression bolts, you may no longer be able to rotate the spacer assembly relative to the hubs. If any of the hub mounting bolts were used as compression bolts, transfer them to the remaining hub mounting bolt holes. Hand tighten the bolts until they are snug against the hub flange. If the red shipping bolts were used as compression bolts, remove these bolts and set them aside. Do not discard the shipping bolts since they may be needed to remove the spacer assembly for routine coupling or equipment maintenance. Make sure all of the compression bolts have been removed. Then double check to make sure there are bolts in all of the hub mounting holes. Tighten all of the mounting bolts on both ends of the coupling. Use a calibrated torque wrench and tighten these bolts in a star shaped pattern, first to 50%, then 75%, then the full torque specified in the installation guide. The use of a calibrated torque wrench is important. If the bolts are not tightened to the specified torque, the bolts could work loose and cause a premature failure of the coupling. As a double check, there should not be any compression bolts in place when this coupling is placed in service. Finally, check the disc packs on each end of the spacer assembly. There should not be any visible distortion in either disc pack once the bolts have been tightened. If there is any waviness in the disc packs, the axial alignment of the equipment will need to be corrected prior to continuing. It is a good idea to recheck the angular and axial alignment before continuing. This check can be done using vernier calipers to measure the gap between the guard ring and the spacer flanges. If space permits, this measurement should be taken as close as possible to the edge of the hubs at four different locations around the coupling, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 
and 12 o'clock without rotating the coupling. All the measurements should fall within the PW high-low range specified in the installation guide. If any of the measurements fall outside the allowable range, you will need to realign the equipment to correct this condition. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove any unnecessary tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the tightness of the disc pack bolts with a calibrated torque wrench, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. The equipment can then be started up and tested. Check the coupling for any possible abnormalities. A strobe light with some sort of shield can be used to inspect the disc pack for any distortion. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If any vibration is detected, it could indicate there are alignment issues or other problems, possibly related to the motor, coupling, or driven equipment. These issues should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video. We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy, building trust since 1900.